Hi everyone, this is Abrar. Welcome to Abrar Nale channel. Today we're gonna see uh, my journey towards black belt lean Six Sigma. Uh, so why I picked up this topic is uh, you know, many people ask me what's the difference between lean, what's the difference between lean green belt and uh, black belt. So uh, there are two reasons I picked up this video. One reason is to give you explanation what did I learn in black belt number one and number two is I also uh, wanted to give uh, you know due credit to my trainers who trained me in black belts. So let me start the background. So I did black belt uh, in uh, you know back in March uh, 2020, and uh, I did uh, they, they were I did it in MSME Central Government of uh, India. My trainer were two. Uh, one is uh, Arvind, Arvind sir. The other one is Mano sir. Both have been phenomenally great trainer. They train uh, with the practical examples. They train with more insight, more scenario, more, uh, more. You know, like it was completely five days zip pass. Uh, it was a lot of learning. We had a lot of takeaways and so on. So I came back home and I was uh, there. Also every day there also a little kind of assignment and we had to go through and uh, everything. The best part what I learned is the teach back session. So every participant need to give one topic uh, in the form of teach back and uh, it was really, really fun. My topic was in that teach, uh, teach back, it's QFT, quality function deployment. I really loved it and it was a really good experiment and uh, the techniques uh, they have in MSME. Particularly, I wanted to thank one more time to Arvind sir and Mano sir. And Manosar, to talk about Manosar, Manosar also one of the other qualities he has is he he knows the people, how people act, how people, what people like it and all that. So he also let me allow to read books actually like I have been reading the books only on the management sites and all that. So he suggested various book. One of the book uh, uh, you know which I felt is I have to thank him. Uh, Six Sigma for dummies. So Six Sigma, although we have many tools and techniques, how to implement the project, how to implement the various tools and all that. But Six Sigma for dummies is slightly different. It talks more about the strategic directions, strategic uh, ways of action, how we can implement Six Sigma in office. Okay. So that's the background uh, about Black Belt, uh, Lean Six Sigma in Black Belt. Let's talk about what are the summary uh, I learned in black belts. In green belt actually like more of things like uh, it, it was like a DMAC approach. So in black belt in from the approach side whether it's a yellow belt, whether it's a green belt, whether it's a black belt the approach is pretty much same. They cover lean and six sigma. When you say six sigma then uh, the next word is DMAC approach. So let me give you summary what are the things I liked in the uh, you know black belt which I got more insight. I got more uh, understanding, in-depth understanding uh, in uh, black belt. So number one topic which is my favorite is process capability. Process capability, although I learned this one CPCPK in my previous uh, green belt, in black belt I became a master in it, CP, CPK, PP, PPK. So CP deals only with the process uh, specification, I mean customer specification because USL minus LSL by Six Sigma it deals, it covers only uh, you know a specification given by customer. So the CPK comes uh, down to a process level. So you see if you look at the formula like USL minus X, X bar by 3 Sigma or you can take X bar minus LSL by six, uh, 3 Sigma. So one of the anything uh, lowest value we can take it. So in uh, you know in black belt I became master uh, you know for example let's say if the CPK CP and CPK is equal, how the process is going to be center. Uh, if the CP, uh, CP and CPK are less than 1, so why we are saying the process is not capable and how many uh, sigma it will have, we all know that if CP and CPK it is a 1 sigma, I mean uh, 1, that means it is a, uh, 3 sigma. I mean uh, anything better, better than that, if you have like an automotive standard, we say 1.66. Uh, sigma CPK uh, it should be uh, I mean 1.66 denotes it is a Phi Sigma that means it's better the more CP or CPK you have that means a better Six Sigma when you have a better Six Sigma 
we will have less uh, defects. That is the first thing I really liked it uh, in black belt. I, 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 uh, I felt that actually I have got gained so much knowledge and so much uh, examples and all that. The second thing which I got uh, in depth about uh, thing is GRR and attribute agreement analysis. In GRR we know, in GRR we have a cross method, right. In cross method, they typically use the method called ANOVA, analysis of variance because you, you, when you select in many tab, so you have two options either to go with the X bar R chart or ANOVA. So, we commonly use this ANOVA because it also gives the variance also as well. So, in GRR particularly, I learned about NDC values that was a crux, crux of the entire GRR. Uh, in the NDC value is uh, greater than 5, it is good to have between 3 to 5 it is uh, 3 to 5 it is conditionally acceptable and anything less than 2 it is not acceptable and why it is and all that in depth uh, uh, knowledge I gained it. So, on the other side so GRR cross method is used for continuous data if your data is measurable data we can use it and we, when you talk about the arc attribute agreement analysis that is exclusively for discrete data like pass fail go no go and uh, ok not ok and uh, so on. So, an attribute agreement analysis, uh, you know how we can compare with the appraisers with the standard within the appraiser and uh, appraisers with the, with the standards and all that. So, that is something I learned more uh, in the black belt and green belt also I learned, but more extensive coverage is there in the black belt. So, that is the second, I mean second thing. Third thing what I talked about, um, what I would like to talk about control charts. In control charts, we all know uh, how control charts we have. When you say continuous data, we have uh, various control charts. One is IMR, individual moving range. If you have only one value, one column, we can use IMR, individual moving range. If you have n equal to 2, you have a 2 parameter, uh, then you can use, uh, there is something called X bar R chart. When you have more values, more columns, uh, up to 10, we can use X bar R chart. Uh, when you have EN more than that, let us talk about, uh, we can use some greater than 10 we can use X bar uh, yes chart. There is something about continuous data on the control charts. What about the other side, the discrete data? Uh, you know in the discrete data we have an attribute data, discrete data. In discrete data what we have is we have uh, four chart mainly. Uh, number one is NP and P chart. So, NP chart is your fix and variable if you have on the uh, defective you can use it. On the defect sides, if you have you can use C chart and U chart. So, in control chart not only that I also learn the interpretation to it, uh, 7 rules which is there and uh, all this rule uh, I learned it in the black belt. So, that is uh, third one I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The next one is fourth one is hypothesis. Uh, in hypothesis I really like that in you know, a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis how we should view that one particular things as a uh, ok and then give null hypothesis in believing that is right and hi alternate hypothesis is uh, completely opposite to a null hypothesis. Those all the analysis I, I learned it that is a uh, fourth item. Fifth item uh, I got exposed to time series, uh, ARIMA like you know to make the better predictions. So, all these one uh, you have something called ARIMA also as well. So, ARIMA on all these uh, time series I, I got uh, more. Uh, into inside and I also got more fluent in the many tab also as well. During the session we practice in 15, 16, 17 versions and also uh, up to 19 versions we have become very, very fluent. I just wanted to once again thanks Manoj sir for, uh, for doing this. The next thing what I, I also learned is uh, you know we talked about hypothesis and ARIMA. I also learned the overall uh, project closure like how we can have that project and how, what are the key, how we need to identify the uh, CTQ and CTBs and how we it can go into project charter and all that, that I, I, I learned it. So, the next thing uh, what I learned is about t-test, t-test is something that if you have the variable uh, variances, a different mean you have, how we can use that t-test also as well. So, this is just to give you summary for the benefit of uh, people who wanted to perceive black belt. Uh, these are all the more extensive, I just uh, quoted about only uh, 6 or 7 items, but you will get the entire uh, you know quotations, entire uh, package uh, in the Lean Six Sigma as such. So, let me give you a summary, we talked about CP, 
CPK, then we talked about uh, GRR and attribute agreement analysis, we talked about hypothesis, we talked about control chart, we talked about T, uh, uh, time series, particularly ARIMA we talked about and we, we also talked about T, uh, T test also as well. So that was, uh, you know, black belt was really fascinating, it has been almost 8 plus month and uh, I also happened to read many books across it and uh, I am really enjoying that uh, you know Lean Six Sigma uh, techniques also as well. Today in this video what I covered is more of uh, you know Six Sigma uh, I mean we also learn more in the you know uh, we, we, we learn Lean also as well how that uh, you know concept began uh, what is mean by K's and, and what is mean cycle time, tag time and so on and so forth. So thank you so much please do like uh, share and subscribe my channel have a nice day ahead.